three. That'll be the first weight class that we see. Alongside Dak Adamson, I'm Ryan Craig once again. And Dak, this will be a really interesting duel today. Twelve different guys out of the 20 that we will see wrestle today are ranked in either the RPI, the NCAA coaches panel, or in the Intermat rankings. So a lot of really talented wrestlers this afternoon. Yeah, that's right. So we're going to see a lot of great matchups, a lot of great matches, and... Uh, Win or lose, this is probably going to shake up um, what we see in the rankings moving forward. It's Dom Foreys for Pitt, number 11 in the country, according to Intermat at 133. Gets the early takedown of Josh Feinsilver. Foreys, one of the very best in the country at this weight. Guy that can easily get on the podium this year. Took a tough loss in Pitt's last duel against South Dakota State. Actually fell by technical fall. But it was to the nation's number one wrestler in Seth Gross, so there's no shame in that. Yeah, and when you're wrestling a, a number one guy like that, it's it's always tough. No matter what you're ranked, there's always those outliers that are just going to, you know, come out there and tear anyone up. Um, and Dom here, he's really good at riding, really good on top. Um, a, he, not, a, not a lot of people get out from underneath him when he gets that leg in. He starts riding that crossbody ride. Here he's going to let Fine Silver up, and that's so that he can move to look towards getting another takedown. And, you know, being the only rank on the team, he's trying to look for bonus points as much as he can. We were talking about the matchups before we hopped on the broadcast. This is a duel that could easily be decided by bonus points, really kind of split down the middle as to who you think might get the wins on paper. Another takedown for Foreys. He takes the 4-1 to one lead. Riding time nearly a minute already here in the first yeah and that's you know when you get a guy ranked as highly as him they're going to rack up the points um because with wrestling you know it's not it's not only about what you can do it's about what you can do for your team um not just in your match but for the duel at large Less so a minute 20 to go in this period so he's, he gets in, he gets this this leg in here, and he rides across the body in the, and puts a lot of torque on their low back, and it's kind of that diagonal pressure, and he sucks that leg back, breaks the guy down to his stomach, makes it really hard to get out. you got to kind of sink your hip down to the mat and pull your knee out. Forrest is 12-3 and three on the season, 78-25 and 25 in his career. Only a single dual loss this year. Does have seven Bonus point wins, five majors, and a two technical falls. Josh Feinsilver, the true freshman, one of the four Feinsilver brothers coming into today with a record of 19-12. and 12. He just got warned for stalling there, so if you're not actively working um, up for an escape, uh, if you're kind of hanging out on bottom, then you're going to get dinged for stalling. And the first one's a warning, but every time after that, your opponent gets a point. So he's on top, riding time, two ticks away from two minutes. Of course, that's a kind of a hidden point lingering out there as people are doing the math when it comes to majors and other bonus situations. Yeah, and those can, those the riding time can make make or break a match for guys. Um, it can go from you know tying to winning a match, or it can take you from a major to a tech or. Uh, you know, regular to a major, so it, it's it's a big, big point that you got to keep your eye on. Final five seconds here of the first period. Interesting to see what Fine Silver or Forties will choose when given the opportunity. Looks like Forties will start down. Now, Fine Silvers are very capable on top in these situations. That's right. Fine Silver is going to look to stop the early flurry here and kind of settle into his ride. He wants to get the leg in as well um, and suck him back, get those hips down. Um, Forey's, you know, yeah, he's hit the stand up and, and kept his balance and the, the mat returns and was able to get his hips out. Um, it's a nice job by Forey's. That is not an easy thing to do, escape from the clutches of any of the fine silver brothers, particularly that quickly. And now he's back to work with his offense. 5-1 is the score as Foreys gets the point for that escape. And then a quick takedown. So he escorts Josh Feinsilver to the mat. Feinsilver did get a 10-8 decision against Appalachian State in Duke's most recent duel, but a far tougher test this afternoon. Dom ranked 11th. Shows that, you know, he, he's, he's a tough opponent. He knows what he's doing. Knows how to win um, the tough matches. And Feinsilver's... 
got a little less experience as a true freshman. You know, he's, he's put together a, a pretty good year so far, but he definitely has a lot to learn in going to that next level wrestling before he goes in gets another takedown there. Yeah, let Fine Silver up a moment ago. So Fine Silver did get the second point on the escape, but quickly taken down one more time. Under 30 seconds to go in the second period. Forrest is constantly trying to throw that left leg in, and uh, Fine Silver is trying to kind of block him out while also working his way up to his feet. Here the referee was counting because if you're on top and you drop down to the leg, you have five seconds to build up to the body or you will get hit for stalling. Final couple of seconds here in period number two. Forrest in a position for a bonus point win already. <laughs> Riding time secured, 10 to two, eight point margin as it stands. So Fine Silver chose bottom and for his uh, signaled for the optional start there. So he's gonna kick him out and look for another takedown. Or he's banking on the fact that he'll get another one at some point in the third period. He's in deep here. Um, he's got control but he's got to get that that left arm out and around the hip of fine silver in order to gain full control for the takedown um, fine silver has his hands locked yeah he's got that crotch lock in there he broke the crotch lock and that gave force the control that he needed to get the takedown see the Ref counting once again down by the legs and there is the call that you alluded to mm -hmm. yeah there's the stalling the stalling warning um Dom is probably not worried about it. Just the warning so far. It's going to get a, a fresh start here in the middle of the mat. Fine Silver up and out. So Fine Silver needs to get a come up with a takedown here to avoid giving away the bonus point. For he's obviously looking for more. In on another shot there. And he's going to get the two there. Another takedown under a minute to go in the third. So that's a locked hands call on Forrest. You cannot lock your hands when you're on top of the guy if he's not on his feet. So that's a one one point uh, technical point for Fine Silver. So Forrest is going to go with the optional start again. 13-6, yes, 13-6 the score. Final 45 seconds of our first match of the afternoon at 133 pounds. If Fine Silver can put together a takedown here he will avoid the uh major decision but force is going to get the takedown he looks like he was he almost had uh the option to get some near fall points but fine silver is able to belly out as of now 15-6 really 16-6 comprehensive effort for Forey's starting pit off on the right note that's right. Yeah. How do you feel about that if you're a team getting to start with, in essence, at least on paper and most likely on the mat as well, your best wrestler of the day, chance at bonus early on? That's good. You know, it, it brings up the morale for the team because it's like puts you on the right track to get those bonus points, um, especially in uh, ACC competition. Coach Keith Gavin liking what he sees there. 4 nothing for Pitt as a team. A major victory for Dom Foreys his sixth major decision of the season. Robert Lee heads to the center of the mat for the Pittsburgh Panthers, who are 2-10 and 10 on the season overall, 0-3 in the ACC. It's Brandon Lenard that meets him there for Duke. Blue Devils 6-5 overall. They have an ACC win, trying to even up their record in Atlantic Coast Conference play with a victory today. Duke actually ranked number 24 in the country in the tournament rankings, unranked in the dual rankings, according to Intermat. Okay. Coach Glenn Lanham admitting this is a better tournament team probably than a dual team. That bodes well for, for the ACC tournament and the national tournament because that shows that we compete or they compete better as a team um, when they're in the tournament environment, which is kind of what you need if you want to do well in your conference tournament and the national tournament. 
um, some of these these conference duels, it's a it's a head to head. You only get one shot, one match per guy to kind of build up some points. But um, when you're in a tournament, if even if you lose your first match, you have the chance to kind of make up some points in the consolation bracket. Lee well, got a decision victory against South Dakota State. Lenard is a really interesting guy. Has five pins on the year. He's got five wins on the year. Yeah. So you want to talk feast or famine, he either pins you or can't come up with the goods. Yeah, he's he's a pin to win guy. Coach Lanham saying if he gets you in that cradle, you will not get up from that. Yeah, that he's is getting to it. That's been an issue at times. Mm -hmm. He's like a, a boa constrictor. Once he once he locks it up, he usually puts him away. Uh, Lee got in that head inside single, kind of in a funky position for Lenard. He's, he's got to watch for uh, going to his back there. Lee's got that cradle locked up. Um, Lenard needs to break the lock of belly down like he did there. Good work from Lenard to stay alive, but a 2 nothing lead for Robert Lee at 149. Lee's going to look to, he's going to look to run a, a wrist in half and kind of run him over his head to put him on his back there. Um, Lenard, he's got to get up off of his stomach here because if you're laying flat like a pancake, you're more likely to get um, hit for that stall warning from the referee. You've got to constantly be working to build back up to your feet. Lenard, a guy that needs to play the angles too. Not necessarily going to overwhelm you with strength. Coach Gavin saying that Lee is really good on top, and we're seeing that play out a little bit here. Yeah, and he's kind of he's hooking wrists and pulling Lenard's hands out to keep Lenard from being able to post with his hands to come up. Um, he's got the, the chicken wing there on the back. Um, and from here, you can run out to the head and hook under it. You can run a cow catcher, or you can get that wrist and hook like he's doing here and run it to the opposite side and tilt him. Because um, all you need is, is just two seconds there uh, after the plane's broken. You got, got yourself two more points. And if you've got a good tilt, you can rack up the score a lot because you get those four near fall points. Yeah, the near fall stuff can head up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Four at a time is what you're allowed. You need to let a guy loose for a second to record the points, but then you can go right back into it. We've seen that time yeah. and time again. Definitely. the if, if you have a good tilt and it's working, you just briefly let go of it, let the ref give you your points, jump right back into it and hit them again. 2-0 the score after one. Lee starts down. Lenard will try to eat into 90, 90 seconds of riding time remaining. And Lenard here, he's, he's got to keep his weight on top of Lee to keep him from being able to base up. He's got that leg in here. Um, and that's a dangerous position because you're basically piggybacking a guy. Um, you've got to be careful. Lee's able to come down and scoop under that leg. Um, Lenard's got to get back behind him. Um, Lee's got to just, you know, he's got to pick the leg up. He can come out. You know, he's going out the back door there and get the take, uh, the reversal. Um, but from there, he had a couple of options. Um, he was able to kind of just whizzer that leg over his head and come out the back. 4 nothing. The score, Lee back to work on top. Robert Lee, 6-9 on the year, 32-39 and 39 in his career. 2-7 and seven in duels. Lenard's got to, he's got to work up and get an escape here um, because Lee's tough on top and he's riding him hard. The referee's going to warn Lenard for song because he's got his forehead on the mat and he's not actively working to get back up to his feet. Because the, the longer he stays down there, the more likely it is that, that Lee's going to get one of those tilts to stick and uh, get some of those near fall points. Under 30 seconds left in the second period. Taylor Romani and Mitch Feinsilver up next for Pitt and Duke, respectively. Feinsilver, the favorite in that one. One of two Duke wrestlers ranked in the Intermat rankings number 11 40s for Pitt Casper's fourth in the heavyweight division Mitch Feinsilver number 11 at 157 
Lenard got hit for another stall call, so that gave Lee an extra point. 5 nothing, and really 6 nothing with riding time as of right now for Lee. Lenard needs to cut him loose here and get into his offense if he's going to make something happen. Or, or he can or work he, for yeah, some try to get some, points. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was just going to... Because if he can ride him down, myself there. Yeah. If he can ride him down. He can get a couple sets of those four. That'll put him up. But uh, Lee's he's no slouch on bottom. As he shows there, the escape makes it six nothing. Lee a takedown away from some bonus points for his team. The nods in on that single, but he's a little he's a little stretched out. So, um, you know, if he's got to either come up or look for a, a stalemate and a fresh start. There's the stalemate. Minute 19 to go. And Lenard's got to stay active the entire rest of the match because he's got that two stall calls so far so any, any stalling at all and that's going to give Lee another point. And that point, combined with riding time, which is now secured, would give him an 8 nothing win, or an 8-point win, which, of course, is a major decision and tax on another point. The team score mm -hmm. hit leading 7 nothing, And there is a takedown from Lee. So in very good shape to earn the second major for Pitt this afternoon. Lenard's got to look... You know, at not just his match, but the the team so far, and he's gotta gotta look on getting out here, do something to to break that um, major score here. This is he's essentially down nine zero. We'll take a reversal or better here in the last ten seconds. Lee continuing to work for more points, looking for some near fall. Lenard checks to make sure that he wasn't seeing the swipes. Nine nothing is how this one will end. Second major decision for Pitt in the first three matches of the afternoon. So 11 nothing to score for the Panthers. Find Silver and Romani to the center of the mat. Jared Back this season, got a major decision against South Dakota State. Zach Feinsilver, really good match against Appalachian State. Technical fall against the guy that was top 20 in the country. Yeah, and he just put together a stellar match. Um, just stayed solid and just kept after him. That high pace, he just wore him down, was able to rack up those points. Early takedown for Wenzel. Wenzel with that arm drag, kind of a boot scoop move there to get the takedown. Coach Gavin saying 57 and 65, those are two areas that he wants to see these guys trying to get a big win. They've been close in a lot of big matches, a lot of opportunities. Romani gave a great effort at 57 against Mitch Feinsilver. Wenzel with the early lead here. He's got that leg and he's kind of cranking on the, the arm looking for... Uh, anything he can get for, for near fall points. Finds over up a couple of weight classes from a year ago, 141 last season. Wenzel building up that riding time. Second under two minutes to go. You're in the first. Munsell came up and hit a suck back there, tried to get some near fall points, but unable to and settles with the, the leg, got the leg in here. Um, and he's he's good with that, that ride. He's trying to scoop the far arm um, to pull it back over a move called a uh, guillotine, but um, fine silver... He sees it coming, but every time he goes to kind of sit out to get out, Wenzel's yanking him back. 
um, for that suck back to try and pull him onto his back. Fine, so we're still looking for the escape. Wenzel's got riding time over a minute and a half. Fine, Silver coming out point. the back door here. He's got a turn and face. Wenzel needs to be careful there because if he sits back on him and he, he goes flat to his back, he can get pinned. It's a defensive pin there. That was really close. Still in control. So the riding time still building. That was a bit of an early stalemate call there. Um, and the crowd didn't like it. Coach Lanham's a little upset about that. It could have been, um, that could have been a two, two, two point reversal if the, the ref had given him maybe five more seconds um, because he, he swung that leg around and, and all he had to do was get his foot out. He would have had a control. Fine Silver doing a little head hunting there. So eventful last couple of minutes here with Wenzel on top. Fine Silver trying a couple of different things to get out from his grasp, but he's been able to cling to that control. Wenzel's just, he's riding that leg tough and, and he's keeping his hips on top of Fine Silver's hips. So he's he's staying in that controlling position. Um, Fine Silver's unable to get his get his hips free and that's why he hasn't been able to, to get an escape there. The early takedown for Wenzel, and then he rides out Zach Feinsilver for two minutes and 45 seconds. The choice is neutral. Zach's going to look to get a takedown here. Um, Wenzel's going to look to extend his lead. It's part of that, too, having just been on bottom for two minutes and 45 seconds, not... Wanting to go back there again. Yeah, you don't want to go back down because he knows that Wenzel's got that tough leg ride. Um, he'd rather take his chances on feet, look for a takedown, tie the match, and work on um, kind of running that riding time down. He's coming out the back door. Wenzel's got that crotch lock here. We're a bit of a, a scramble position. This is when the, the guy who brings his head up and brings his chest up usually wins the scramble when, when you got one leg apiece. Fine Silver looking to roll underneath. Um, he's got to be careful there with a potentially dangerous. So if you crank that knee in a bit of an awkward position, then the, the ref will call the potentially dangerous because you don't want to let him just kind of run wild and crank knees can end up with a, an injury. Yeah, you see Wenzel grab his knee there, ankle area, something for a second or two, a little bit of a grimace on his way back up. Yeah, probably just torqued that knee a little bit weird, but um, he was able to, you know, get back up and get right in on the takedown. Another two for Wenzel. Feinzel has really got to get to work now because Wenzel's reaching that three minutes of riding time and a 4-0 lead. Um, he's got to... He's got to get an escape or a reversal here um, to finish out this, this second period. 30 seconds left in the period. Wenzel has been impressive. One on top here in this match at 165. We'll take a break after this one before we bring you the match at 174. Final couple of seconds of the second period. Wenzel already having a conversation with his coach yeah. about what he wants to do in the third. He's going to choose top. He's been successful riding so far, so why not go back to it? Yeah, he's got three minutes and 32 seconds of riding time. He's Most of this match has been spent with Jake Wenzel on top. And it's, it's that leg riding. He throws those legs in, and, and you know, it's hard to get out from underneath. Feinsilver is able to catch that leg as it was coming in. Um, so he's he's got the right leg of Wenzel there, but Wenzel still has control. Feinsilver needs to hop over. He's got to get uh, back behind Wenzel here and get his legs free. Um, 
to get the, the reversal. Von Silver's got a hold of that leg. So he gets the two-point two point reversal. No, ref, referee ref waves it off. it off. He didn't have control for a long enough time there. Von Silver looking for the reversal and does get it that time. So a minute 13 to go. Von Silver probably have to get to work on some near fall. Riding time's locked up. Yep, so he's either got to cut him loose or look for some near fall. Obviously, you cut him loose. You're looking for those two for ones. Mm -hmm. There it is. So it's five to two, make it six two with riding time. Von Silver in on a shot again. He's got to get his right arm through um, and grab the hip there. Wenzel gets the two there. That may do it. The five point margin, six if you include the riding time here with less than 30 seconds to go. He's looking to throw that leg back in and, and um, ride it out here. That leg ride is something the fine silver so often use on their opponents. Yeah, he's got like a conventional leg ride. The fine silver is like that inside leg ride, which is kind of the opposite. It's a little bit different. It's harder to um, get out from. You don't see it as often, but Wenzel's got he had great hip pressure there. It's a good win for Jake Wenzel. Lone victory at 157, number 11, Mitch Feinsilver getting the win over Taylor Bramani. But for E. Zanetta, Lee, and Wenzel getting wins for Pitt and Coach Keith Gavin. Now it's Matt Feinsilver, another freshman against Tommy O'Brien, a fellow first year guy. So two gentlemen making their debuts at the collegiate level. Matt Feinsilver has really turned it on this season and come out, you know wrestling really well he uh just got done beating a uh, top 20 ranked guy in his last match and um so he's he's gonna probably be looking for um bonus points if he can against o'brien right now o'brien one and seven in his career oh and four in duels matt fine silver 21 and six this season undefeated in dual matches at eight no you can see fine silver just right back in his stance on an eight-match winning streak, Coach Lanham thinks he really has an honest shot at getting on the podium at Nationals as a freshman. Will be the first Duke Blue Devil to do so. Obviously, some improvements to be made between now and then, but starting to put it all together. You mentioned that win over a top-20 guy. It was a major decision, too, and yeah. almost a tech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he went out there, and he got after him, and um, Force Prisbas didn't know what hit him. Um, Matt was all over him, and O'Brien's in on a shot, and... Um, Matt did kind of a little uh, dump there to get him to his stomach, and now he's going to try and break the lock and come behind. Um, O'Brien's holding on pretty tight there. Yeah, he knows that's that's worth two points. Hang on to that leg, basically, at least. Yeah. And there it is. There's the two points for Fine Silver. Goes to work quickly on top. Now he's throwing his leg in, um, so he's keeping that ankle hooked and looking for the leg. He gives up the leg, but now he's going to – gives up the ankle, but now he's going to go for that inside um, leg ride there and uh, look to run that Turk and put him on his back, get some near fall points. It's working the face there a little bit with the forearm. I know you like when guys are on top, make the guy feel you underneath you. You said that was always a part of what you tried to do is looking for some near fall here is fine silver. Yeah, and, and it works. You know, he got him. He was one swipe, by the way. Sorry, Dak, real quick, but O'Brien, a nice job there to right. avoid that second swipe. He rolled through quickly, but um, it, it works to kind of rough them up a little bit um you know show them that you mean business and and it kind of takes guys out of their it get you get in their head a little bit takes them out of their comfort zone when you're kind of cranking on their head like he is right now two swipes three and now four so maximum point output for fine silver looking for the pin nearly had it there are the four points recorded now that he's out of that move so six nothing over a minute of riding time, and Matt Feinsilver certainly looking for some bonus points for his team here at 174, and it's something that Duke needs, quite honestly. They're not going to be able to go, even if they win out, that's still pretty tight. Yeah, they they need bonus points from, from all the guys that, that can get them. Um. 
little bit of a save by the Bell situation there, perhaps for O'Brien. If Duke did win out, they would win the duel by a single point. But I don't know that Duke wants to try to count on that, given everything that's left. Yeah, you want to you wanna go into it with a little bit more uh, security there. That's why you want some of these um, bonus point wins that uh, some of these upper weight guys can hopefully put together for them. It's that, that hip dump again to... Very similar situation to what we saw a moment ago. O'Brien in on the leg. Find Silver able to clear it off. Around yeah. for the takedown. That's two points, eight nothing. He's going to go right back to that leg, and he's going to work that same Turk move that he was working before. Um, right here, kind of hip pressure, break him down to his stomach, and then run his head around. This is exactly what we saw in the first period. Mm -hmm. And one of those, if it ain't broke, don't fix it situations. Right. Fine Silver will hope for, I would think, at least five for his team. With an 8 nothing lead, riding time in his favor. He's just got to stay active on top, keep working for those tilts. Um, those four-point near-fall points like we were talking about, you can really rack the score up really quick. O'Brien's got to keep working to avoid that stall warning. Hasn't gotten one yet. And here laying flat on his stomach. There's the first. The ref's going to give him that warning. Um, he's not actively working to, to build up to his feet. He's just actively working to not give up near fall points. Um, and when you go, when you lay flat, you're, the referees will give you a little bit of leeway. But after that warning, they're going to start calling him quicker. Ten seconds left in the second period. Fine Silver looking for some additional points here at the end of the second. Eight nothing to score. Riding time secured, so nine nothing. Fine Silver needs six for the tech. O'Brien needs a takedown to get out of giving up bonus points. As it stands, a major decision in the balance. Fine Silver chose feet, you know, look for the takedown and then look for the near fall from there. O'Brien's kind of, he's got to be on top of defense, but also looking to get the takedown, like you said, to get rid of that. There is the takedown. That's that a big one for O'Brien. It big, might not mean that he wins this individual match, but it may help his team win the duel. Yeah, it was a big break for, for him in the points, but uh, a reversal for Fine Silver, but now just a minute 20 left. Probably took the tech out of the equation by getting that takedown, but we'll see if Fine Silver is able to come up with some near fall. Needs to do it quickly. O'Brien does have that one stall warning. Needs to be careful here. Yeah, because those, those can definitely start to add up if he doesn't stay active. There's the second stall, so that's a point. 11 to two, 12 to two with riding time. Fine Silver still needs a couple of moves here. Even four near fall points wouldn't get the technical fall. He's, he's really working that Turk as hard as he can, but O'Brien's fended him off well. Um, he's gonna looks like he was gonna try to switch to a chicken wing, but um, he's gotta he's gotta get something um, in these last 20 seconds here if he wants to get the tech. O'Brien drags him out from the circle. Find Silver up 11 to two with 15 seconds to go. So the decision not in question. It's just whether it's gonna be. Four or not. The escape from O'Brien. Five seconds to go. And he's he's just gonna run it out here. Final score twelve to three. A major decision for Matt Fine Silver. Cuts the pit lead to 14 to seven in the team portion of the competition and a job well done for Matt Feinsilver.
for Fine Silver, his fifth major win of the year. Moves his record to 22 and 6, 9 and 0 in Dual 